4.5 equations of lines. So we're going to be using MA912, AR1.2, 2.4, 2.5, as well as MA912, F1.2, 1.3, and 1.6. So our objectives are to write equations of lines using the point slope form, write equations of horizontal and vertical lines, write linear functions given a graph or a table, use linear models to solve application problems. So point slope form of the equation. The formula is that y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. When you're given a slope, m, and an ordered point, x1, y1. So in example one, it says write an equation of a line that passes through the point 1, negative 2, and has a slope of 3. So our 1 is x1, y1. Our slope, our m, is a 3. I identified my x1, y1. I wrote, identified my slope of m. We're going to write our point slope formula. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And all we're going to do is use substitution to plug in for the x1, x1 y1, and the m. So we have y minus, I put y1 in parentheses because I'm replacing a variable equals 3 times x minus the 1. I also put that in parentheses as well. The reason being is because it might have a sign change. Here we have a y minus minus situation, so it's now y plus 2, 3 times x minus 1, in case there was a negative sign here and caused a situation. Then you're going to use distributive property. So we have y plus 2 equals 3x minus 3, and then subtract the 2 over to put us in slope intercept form. So we have y equals 3x minus 5. So point slope leads can lead us to our slope intercept, which allows us to graph. Example 2 says write an equation of a line that passes through the point Three, the order pair 3, 1, and negative 3, 4. So this time they gave us two ordered points, but they did not give us a slope. So first thing we need to do is find our slope. So the slope formula says y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So identify your x1, y1, x2, y2. And then we're going to substitute into the equation. So we see 4 minus a1 over negative 3 minus a3. 4 minus 1 is a3 in the numerator line. Negative 3 minus another 3 is negative 6 in the denominator line, which then reduces to the fraction negative 1 half. So our m is going to be negative a half. And then you can pick any of the two ordered points to be your um, x1, y1. Since 3, 1 is both positive, I'm going to use that as my ordered point. That'll be your x1, y1. Then you're going to plug, use the point slope formula. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we're going to substitute in. So we see y minus a1 equals negative a half times x minus a3. So it's still going to be y minus 1, still negative a half times x minus 3. I did this in case there was a sign change. Now, notice that we have a fraction here. It's going to be okay. So you're going to distribute. So we get y minus 1 equals negative a half x. Negative and negative makes it positive. 1 times 3 is 3 over 2. Then we need to add the 1 over. So right now we see y equals negative a half x plus now it's I have 1.5 plus another dollar making it 2.5. 2.5 is the same thing as saying 5 over 2. Reason being is, remember the rules, 3 halves plus 1 over 1. If I want to add a fraction with a whole number, I need to have common denominators, which means multiplying top and bottom by 2. So then you see 3 halves plus 2 over 2 
and that's where the five half comes from. So our slope intercept form is y equals negative a half x plus five halves. In example three, it says write an equation of a line that passes through the point two negative one and is first a parallel and then b perpendicular to the line y equals is two thirds x minus five thirds. So this is a two part problem. Parallel lines. First thing we need to know about, remember about parallel. They have the same slope. So first thing, this is the equation they want us to identify. They want us to use this equation right here. So our slope in this instance is two thirds. So we're gonna use a slope of two thirds and then they want us to use the ordered point two negative one. So we have x1, y1, and we have our equation. We're gonna use point slope formula. I'm writing it down, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We're gonna substitute in. So y minus a minus one equals two thirds times x minus two. Minus minus means plus, so we see y plus one equals two thirds x. Because I'm distributing at the same time, so two times the two is four thirds, so negative four thirds. Then we need to subtract one now. So we get y equals two thirds x. I'm short four thirds and spend another dollar I didn't have, which means I'm getting another three thirds out of this. It's negative seven thirds. And the reason I did that is because we know negative four thirds minus one over one. They need to have a common denominator of three. So you get negative four thirds minus three over three. That's where the negative seven over three comes from. So this is our equation for a line that's running parallel to the original. In order for it to run parallel, they need to have the same slope, but a different y-intercept. Now for part B, they want us to find it perpendicular to it. So on part B, perpendicular is gonna have a negative reciprocal slope. So if our original was two thirds, our slope perpendicular is gonna be negative three halves. So again, here's our new slope and then our ordered point to negative one again. This is your x1, y1. And this is the slope we're gonna be using. So we have our equation, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So our slope value on this one's gonna be different. So we have y minus a negative one equals now it's gonna be negative three halves times x minus two. So we are gonna do distributive property at the same time that we are sign changes. So we become y plus one, negative three halves times x and then negative three times the negative two is positive six over two. I wrote it as six over two so we can reduce it. We have y plus one equals negative three over two x. Six divided by two is a three. Then subtract your one over. So your final answer becomes y equals negative three halves x, had three dollars, spent a dollar, plus two. That is the equation of a slope of any, a line perpendicular to the original. Example five says write a linear function f of x equal to mx plus b for the points negative two, negative six, zero, negative three, two, zero, and four, three. So first thing, they gave us four ordered points. We only need two of them. They did not give us a slope. So you're gonna pick two to do your point slope, I mean, to do your slope formula, and then we're gonna use the y-intercept situation. So on this one, I'm gonna use 
these two ordered pairs to come up with our slope. So this is my x1, y1, x2, y2. So you're going to use a slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 0 minus a minus 3 over 2 minus 0. So you get 3 in the numerator, in the denominator. That is my slope. Then you have to pick one to use point slope or if you look logically at these things, this number here, this ordered pair, happens to be your y-intercept. That is your b-value. The ordered point 0, negative 3, that is the y-intercept, which is b. So if we have our equation that they want us to do, which is the function f of x equals mx plus b, all we're doing is substituting in for the m and the b. So you're going to write f of x equals our slope, which was 3 over 2 with x. Now our b value is a negative 3, so I'm going to write minus 3, and you're finished. On example six, it says write a linear function, again, f of x equals mx plus b for the points in the table. So they gave us a set of ordered points. So think of it as ordered points here. If you don't like seeing it as a table, rewrite them. You have a point that's at negative three, nine, negative two, seven, negative one, five, 0, 3, because remember, x is, is the numerator line, f of x is the same thing as saying y equals is the y position. So again, you're going to pick two points to find the slope. I'm going to use the last two points. It doesn't matter which ones you pick. So I'm going to say that's x1, y1, x2, y2. I'm going to do the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we see 3 minus 5 over 0 minus a minus 1. 3 minus 5 is negative 2 over 0 minus minus means plus a 1. So our slope is negative 2. Then we look again and notice that this ordered pair on the table, which is this one here, is also your y-intercept. So our y-intercept happens to be 0, 3, because this is the b position. You write your function, f of x equals mx plus b, and all we got to do is substitute. So f of x equals m is now negative 2 with an x, b is a positive 3, so I write plus 3. Example 8. It says a rock climber is climbing up a 500-foot cliff. By 1 p.m., the rock climber has climbed 115 feet up the cliff. By 4 p.m., the climber has reached a height of 280 feet, as shown at the um, figure below. Find the average rate of change of the climber and use this rate of change to write a linear model that relates the height of the climber to the time. So this is a rough sketch. Please don't mind my drawings. So we need to figure out what is x and what is y? So because time is the low, the smaller number, that is your x component. So we know that at 1 p.m. we were at 115 feet. So at 1 p.m. we we're at 115 feet. And then at 4 p.m. We we're at 280 feet. So we have our values to find our slope value, our rate of change, our average rate of change. So we need to find our rate of change which happens to be the slope. So we're looking at y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So we see 280 minus 115 over four minus one. That's gonna give us 55. After we do our subtraction and division. So you're going to do 280 minus 115 and then 4 minus 1 is 3 
do the division and you end up with 55. And that's 55 feet per hour is what we're moving at. Then they want us to calculate an estimated model. So we have our M and you're gonna pick one of the two to use in point slope. So I'm gonna use a smaller number to make it easier. So we do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we see y minus 115 equals 55 times x minus 1. And x minus x1 could be also labeled as t minus t sub 1 since we're dealing with time. But I'm just gonna keep it with basics. You know, distribute to get y minus 115 equals 55x minus 55. Then you are going to add 115 over. So we're getting y equals 55x plus 60. So I looked at it in terms of x, but since we're dealing with time, in form of time. So y equals 55t plus 60. Example 9. You are controlling an unmanned aerial vehicle, a UAV, for surveillance. The table shows the height in thousands of feet of the UAV times the minutes after you started its descent from cruising altitude. So in the first column, it's our minutes, 0 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. This is the height in thousands of feet, so 65,000 feet, 60,000 feet, 55,000 feet, 50,000 feet. So for part A, they want us to write a linear function f of x equals mx plus z for the data in the table. So first thing, they gave us ordered points. Think of these as ordered points. This is 0, 65, 10, 60. 20, 55, 30, 50. So we need to find our slope. We need to know our rate of change. So I'm gonna use the first one and the second one. So 60 minus 65 over 10 minus zero. That's negative five over 10. which is negative a half. Now, the next thing, we need to put it in form of f of x equals mx plus b. Well, the reason I picked the first ordered pair was, that is your y-intercept. So we know that our x1, y1, for our y-intercept, which is b, is 65. So our function is gonna be f of x equals negative a half x, plus 65. Part B says interpret the slope and y-intercept in the context of the problem. So we have to interpret it. Remember, slope is, change, is the height change. So slope is going to be the height decreasing. Five hundred feet per minute. The one intercept in this instance is the descent it started at. Which was sixty five thousand feet. And the reason I know that is because remember, in our table, it said the height was in feet, thousands of feet. Okay, on C, it wants us to explain what is the average rate of change of the function? Well, we already found the average rate of change. Remember, our m is negative a half. 
remember that's negative a half and that's in thousands. So half of a thousand, it's a negative 500 feet. per minute. On part D, they want us to find the height of the UAV when you stop the descent after one hour. Remember, our equation is in minutes. So, they want one hour. That is the same thing as saying 60 minutes. You're gonna take your equation that we created in A, our function, And we're going to substitute in 60 for x, because they want in minutes, not in hours, in minutes. So half of 60 is 30, so it's negative 30 plus 65. So we get 35,000 feet. That is where I'm located after an hour.